Hello YouTube viewers, welcome to my show Rocket Monday. In today's episode, we're going to take a look at the BFR or Big Falcon Rocket. So the idea came to Elon Musk is that instead of having Falcon 9 and Falcon Heavy, let's just have one rocket to do every single rocket's job. So they come up with the idea of building a super heavy lift rocket. What does that mean? Simply a lot of payload into low Earth's orbit, upwards of 150 ton. It is higher than what uh, Saturn V could do. So it is really, really powerful rocket. And from day one, they are designing it to be 100% reusable. It's not like uh, where Falcon 9, the first few were, they, they were just thrown out. Then they tried to land it by parachute. Then they tried it to land propulsively. Then they added grid fins. Then they, you know, made titanium. This from day one is designed to be 100% reusable. So this is the core idea. 100% reusable and uh, super heavy lift. And it's supposed to replace Falcon 9 and Falcon Heavy. So what is the cost and design aspect of it? It's a two-stage thing, which is a very good idea. And many of you know, like uh, Saturn V is a stage, three-stage vehicle. Now you may wonder like, how the heck it can go to Mars in two stages? Well, it can't. Now that comes, it's the unique ability, the ace up its sleeve, space refueling, as I'm, as I'm showing you guys here. Now this ability allows you to basically send only a two-stage rocket without needing you to build anything new to Mars or to anywhere basically like if you can refuel a rocket to full capacity even a normal rocket is going to go very far and they are specifically from day one is designing something to do that and this there will be a uh, shuttle basically shuttle like thing that is stage two would be designed just as a fuel carrier all it's going to do is take fuel and refuel it in uh, lower orbit. however it will not be able to do that in one go the best estimates I'm getting is like six refuels and to understand this idea it's a kind of big rocket it's 100 meter tall so it's a big it's basically statue of liberty so to move that much mass off the ground they're gonna need some serious horsepower to get that they are using 31 sea level engines raptor engines basically and in the upper stage they're gonna have three to four uh, sea level engines that will be there just because when you're doing landing you still going through atmosphere for that reason even your upper stage needs to have the ability to compensate for atmospheric pressure and then they're gonna have four vacuum engines now that vacuum engines as i told you the engine is the same only the nozzle has been expanded as you can see in this picture however this picture is the old one or new one i'm not sure because they keep changing the design so i'm keep hearing that either they're gonna have three engines or four engines in this so whatever that design turns out to be, basically there will be two slot types of engine in one stage. And uh, crucial detail is that all the interconnect, basically the fuel transfer that will be happening from one to another would happen through these pipes. Why does that matter? That simplifies the cost of the infrastructure they need for landing. So as you have many have seen, like when we have uh, launch systems, they require a launch platform. The platform is kind of expensive thing. It's not just there to hold the structure, it's also there to fuel it. And if any of you have seen the launch structure needed for space shuttle, you'll be like quite surprised. It's like very expensive structure. To simplify that process and allowing it to refuel in orbit, they come up with the idea that the fuel transfer will happen from the back end. And all the, as you can see, the ship will mate from the back end and transfer fuel using small thrusters to, you know, jerk the engine and the flu fluid will flow and everything about this rocket is one thing it's one rocket to rule them all that's the whole point they don't want to make a multiple small rocket falcon 9 falcon heavy nothing like that just one rocket that's it no no bs nothing else and how are they gonna transfer something like this so basically they are building it near a dock as of now and they're gonna transfer this rocket to the launch pad in two parts stage one and stage two and it's gonna be generally they might break it down even further but it's a sea link and they have already figured out the dynamics of that so and it's, it's not, never gonna be you never gonna catch it on you know going on top of a bus or uh, you know heavy transport so, so they have figured that those things out and uh, cost and design is kind of locked down so let's come at uh, their core new innovation basically the new thing in the town is raptor rocket engine what you have to understand about raptor is that they have uh, spacex has gained a lot of experience uh, with liquid oxygen but they have only used kerosene so far and they also tried to cryo cool it 
and so this idea of using methane is not new but it wasn't done on full scale to this day for one very simple reason a liquid methane almost gives you the same kind of power to weight ratio as a liquid hydrogen and liquid hydrogen is easier so of course your tank will become smaller but cryogenics methane we didn't use it and uh, this is the mixture ratio that i have got from wikipedia is that 3.8 now what does that mixture ratio means basically for three kilos of methane they're gonna only put uh, three kilos of oxygen basically uh, that's how i can explain it what they are actually trying to say is basically they're not gonna burn it to full 100 percent reason for that is they don't want hot gas coming out of the air they want hot hydrogens coming out of it hydrogen is the one that actually propels the ship so for this reason whenever you get a, a basically liquid hydrogen rocket like space shuttle it is a burning very fuel rich so there is a lot of hydrogen but very little oxygen this is done to gain extra efficiency and that's why you always see specific impulse of uh, liquid hydrogen rocket is the highest I'm like, this can only go up to 330 and 375 in vacuum. So uh, you can get a higher for space shuttle engines because they were using liquid hydrogen. For this reason, uh, they have to have the ability to control. Basically, they want to control how much methane is going, how much oxygen is going. For this reason, they are using what's called full flow stage combustion. In my last week's video, I specified that all they did that they had the pre-burner and all they did is just let the exhaust go. In this scenario, the, the pre-burner is also feeding into the main combustion chamber. And this is a kind of simple breakdown. Now, this is a very complicated, so allow me to simplify this. All you have is two pre-burner. One burns it very high oxygen, one burns it very high methane. Why they are doing it? So they don't have to create a seal where, you know, oxygen and methane is getting pressurized by the same turbine. So if you have the same turbine, you have to have very, very expensive seals just so because these are cryogenic things and rubber doesn't work that well at cryogenics. So, you know, if the seep in happens, it's going to blow up and this allows them unique control. Basically, in flight, they can change like, you know, uh, I think we are facing more drag from atmosphere so they can, you know, increase the boost by increasing the oxygen or they're like, okay, now we need to coast. Uh, so they're going to like you know increase the hydrogen content uh, basically methane content and it's completely sealed so you will have only one nozzle as many of you have seen who have falcon 9 it has a nozzle and then there is another exhaust port that is for the gas generator in this there won't be such thing now there have been engines that have been full flow stage combustion and uh, Stage combustion is nothing new, as I already mentioned in my last videos, is that uh, Russians have already figured out how to do this, but they were doing this with kerosene. They're going to try to do this with methane. So, in summary, it's a new engine, a new design, and I'm pretty sure they're going to also do the same thing what they did with uh, Merlin engine. Basically, they're going to keep reiterating it until they reach a design freeze point. So, let's uh, look at the practicality of this whole thing. This is why you came to this video and idea is very simple i really like the idea they are only going for two stage and that they are focusing on refueling now this is very awesome this is very simple and the cost and delay that's going to happen the overrun of the cost and uh, the fact that it's going to be delayed a few years that's normal that's acceptable in uh, space industry and uh, suffice to say cost of this rocket won't be that high because they are building it in one place and they have already uh, done the logistics of it and they have experience to make cheap rockets so suffice to say i am hopeful but elon musk prices will not happen you have to do elon musk price into two elon musk timeline into two so however mars mission i did a bit of digging nasa has no plan for mars mission flat out no plan for mars like nothing like if you look at their roster all they are planning to do is build a basically iss in lunar orbit the reason for that is now we know how people die in low, uh, zero gravity now we want need to know how people die in zero gravity plus the radiation that's going to happen there that's why we can't just transfer international space station there it was not designed to have radiation shielding so we need to build a completely new structure that can handle that radiation that's going to happen outside of earth's magnetosphere so for that reason they are kind of booked till uh, 20 25 or 2030 that all they're gonna do is build that so suffice to say i do not see any uh, way can they fund it themselves no flat out no i told you like uh, in last video they need astronaut they need uh, research de uh, development that will happen on the surface of mars they cannot do it they are a rocket building company they build good rockets other than that they cannot build astronauts
they are not there yet they might open their uh, program but who is going to pay for it elon musk is rich but not that rich so i'm quite skeptical of the mars mission they might do a demo a demonstration flight it because it will be a very good investment for them to like to show the world that we can do this and uh, in that way they can attract a uh, you know foreign investment like let's say european space agencies like you know what uh, will pay for you or china might simply say yeah, you know what uh, we'll take it or russia or any things like that so for that reason there will be one or two mission but i think there will be mostly demonstration mission because nasa currently as i speak to you in no way shape or form is even trying to go to mars their primary focus is to be deep space gateway which basically is iss on uh, moon so that's the first hurdle i see in this whole grandiose project second uh, they are saying they're going to make methane in you know from the atmosphere and water found on mars i'm like yeah, what like that's the part that bothered me the most and as you can see this they are showing like a propellant depot here also in moon now to its credit it can go to the moon and come back without needing refueling on the moon so awesome this can't be done on mars they need the rocket back from mars so for mars they have to build the fuel now the idea is not new it's called in situ utilization basically wherever you are you're going to use the material available to you and to create whatever you need so this is a rough diagram what they themselves are providing basically they're going to take water mining at this point i lost interest because water is not easily available there is no lakes or like you know you you cannot drill to you know few feet and like okay water will come out like how we do boring on earth like that drilling itself might be very expensive and complicated and they might not even be guaranteed because it's a different planet we do not know what like where there is liquid water or not so and uh, some places where you see ice that's co2 ice that's not water ice of course below that co2 there is water ice again the drilling pro problems that was going to come up nobody has solved it so flat out saying that we going to mine water it's like you already know how you going to do that let's see then they're going to take co2 from the atmosphere and this many people uh, think there is atmosphere in mars and it's absolutely there however it's almost negligible it's very thin very very thin to give you an idea it's uh, if you run a like a fan a very big powerful fan and you put it like few meters ahead of you you're not going to feel anything so for that reason to extract co2 from atmosphere you're going to need a very powerful pump to extract enough of it you can do it with like you know a small 5, uh, five volt pump but if you need enough which you're going to need tons of uh, fuel for this where are you going to get that and then they're going to combine it and have some processes that they have electrolysis plus sabater it's not uh, impossible to do it's just the amount of energy needed for this project and uh, other than nuclear reactor there is nothing that can power this and to nasa's credit nasa knows this that solar panel is flat out useless on mars and uh, as you can see in their curiosity they're flat out using radio radio isotope generators and uh, their next manned mission that they have planned for 2050 they will have nuclear react 10 kilowatt to 1 kilowatt small scale nuclear reactor that will power a sterling engine and you can look it up uh, nasa nuclear reactor sterling engine so you will get the detail about that so how you going to get the power for that and spacex does not have the clearance to send a nuclear reactor so these are quite few hurdles like uh, it may do one or two missions just to prove the point that they are you know ready to be sold but can they have full fledged human mars mission yeah that's kind of pushing it and uh, you going to need a very big infrastructure just to you know unload this rocket in like uh, in martian movie they have a ladder going from down here that's that's just not going to happen so from side it's quite easy for humans like you you can have a rope and you, you slide down on it however for big cargo that's going to be a bit bit difficult so how they're going to solve that issue is going to be quite interesting to see so now we come at the bullshit it's elon musk so you know the man is known for uh, letting go of his emotions he's going to do earth to earth like this picture is the best picture i can you know show of to the stupidity of this idea is like using a flame thrower to write your cigarette why why do you want to do that and for all those like your his tweet said that it is going to cost same as airline i'm like did entire humanity lost few hundred iq points just for your own sake for your own sanity find out the cost of jet fuel there are two types of jet fuel and one is used in cold weather 
so just find the cost of the jet fuel then find the cost of liquid o2 and then find the cost of liquid methane just do that for your own sanity just do that and after that we're gonna have a talk just do that and be mindful this does not take uh three four hundred tons it takes thousands of tons yes it's thousands of ton like six thousand ton or something like that so suffice to say and it's gonna be a very painful flight that orbit that they showed uh, like you know in less than in one hour they're gonna be like you know go somewhere else okay cool but icbms can do that because they don't have to slow down second if you try to slow down the g-force will go up and in that projection that they showed that's the 3g they're saying ah, 3g is like a amusement park ride no 3g is painful and amusement park park rides can only hit 3g's for a few seconds it's like not even few whole second it's like one jolt that you get of 3g it's not like 3g it's gonna hurt like it's gonna be painful experience so it's gonna be expensive it's gonna be painful and not to mention it will be very slow not because of the rocket simply because to get the rocket rocket are so loud and so dangerous that people keep it you know far away as far away as they can so you are going from your city to your airport which is already far away and people complain about this that's why you know high speed trains or like a bullet train even make sense it's like you know you have instead of going so far you just go to the station which is generally in the town here you're gonna have uh, you know go to a barge and embark on a basically ship and then ship to this and people are like why don't they use hyperloop i'm like a hyperloop is not ready yet b hyperloop requires vacuum vacuum in a steel tube while you are launching a rocket where a rocket is producing 160 decibel of sound you're gonna vibrate that thing to death basically literally the vibrations that will happen on the outside of this thing will be very very energetic it's it, like we don't have a clear understanding of it because even if you are a rocketeer like you go to see launches they keep you very far off like the structures that you see things like this or this like this they have to be built to very strong standards that's not cheap like they, they have to be built to very strong strength standards to handle the sound that way and then you're gonna be like oh no, 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 they're gonna do it on water again st water still reflects sound like you put sound on it it reflects that's why we have sprayers that's why we don't unless you do a submerged rocket launch which was tried and military missiles can do that you're gonna have a very very noisy environment and when i mean noisy it's not like if you are caught off guard and rocket launch happen you're gonna you know lose your hearing i mean you're gonna go to hospital you may have internal bleeding loss of eyesight or flat out death so i'm not i'm genuinely lost how the heck this many people even thought think this is a good idea like from indian media to western media to almost everywhere it's like a oh, bfr cheaper than aircraft i'm like 5000 ton fuel is not cheap and of course every like if you combine the end to end destination like from your home to wherever you're going it's not going to happen and weather also plays a very crucial role you know like no rockets can launch in any weather no you, have you not seen any rocket launch earlier? Have you not seen any SpaceX launch before? Like they, they keep checking high altitude winds. Oh, high altitude winds are, uh, yeah, we're not gonna launch. And if at the site of landing, if there is an issue, remember this, this cannot land anywhere. This has to land on a barge. Like it has to land, it cannot land on a city. It's not like a plane where you can try to land it. It has to be, but otherwise you will kill people around it. It's not like a plane, okay, it's a, uh, some building got damaged. This is like freaking obliterate the whole thing so can it be done yeah if you have trillion dollars should it be done hell no like why don't why do you even worry about this like just use your hyperloop magic hyperloop like this baffles me to no end so this was my presentation on spacex bfr i hope you liked it or learned from it in that case please like if you didn't dislike no problem with that and leave a comment what would you like to see in next episode of rocket mondays and subscribe press the bell icon because i make video every day and as always thanks for watching